Glad to have you back. And now is the personal finance segment with Charles Fakoha. Well, a continuation, I think, the last segment of the financial bliss in marriage. Good morning, Charles, and thank you for joining us. Morning, Margaret. Good morning. Good so morning. I followed yesterday, and trust me, it was, it, it was a delight to listen to. Okay. Yeah, thank you so much for that. Yes, let's just quickly look at, you know, we're talking about some of the things we need to do before the before. wedding. Yeah. Now, we're now saying, on, after that big day now, that D-Day, after everything, the first thing you have to consider now is whether to combine your finances together. Where whether to have a joint account, you know, the parties have to sit down and agree. Then you have to inform your bank that you have changed your name. Yes, in case of the for the 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 female, then you also now have to change your beneficiaries. You know, these are things that we just need to discuss it. Then. You can also have what I call a financial date night. That is where two of you will talk about your future, your finances together. So by the time you implement all these discussions, you will see that obviously you are expected or you might likely have a blissful finance during mm. your marriage life. Okay. Yes. So that concludes... Wow. Financial bliss mm -hmm. in marriage. Mm -hmm. Now let's look at the financial checklists in wedding. Like we have said yesterday, people plan so well for their wedding that is up to the extent of the color of the flower, the type of shoe, the best man who put on the bridal train, everything they plan it. But after that big day. They don't even plan for the marriage itself. They only plan for the wedding. And I said there are two things. Yes. The wedding is just for that, for that day, while the marriage continues after the wedding. So what are the checklists you need to begin to talk about? Where are you going to live? Mm -hmm. These are things you should have discussed. Okay. How many children are you going to have? I've seen that bringing issues to young couples. No, we didn't talk about it. Ah, no, I'm going to do family planning. These are things you should have discussed while you are still engaged or while you are still dating or courtship. Because like I said, starting a family is not a child's play. There are financial implications to take care of a child from uh, birth. In fact, before birth, the pregnancy, birth, you know, and until the child becomes an adult, is a whole lot of money. So the couples have to agree where to stay how to handle extended families, your in-laws, in terms of finances. Though we have one method you normally use, generally budgeting, that you will say you will have an envelope for each in-law, for each expenses. In-law one, you put the money in the envelope. In-law two, if in-law one come, you give from there. And if that envelope has finished, then you tell the in-law, there is nothing to give to you. Then, how to take care of grandparents you can't run away from it when you give birth whose mother or whose uh, auntie will come in some part of the country they say it's omuga what do they call it yeah these are things couples have to discuss and agree for them to have a successful marriage because they love each other but if they don't come out sit down discuss it when they begin to face it becomes a challenge and people will be saying, ah, these two couples, but they were in love. Just this, why are they quarreling? Because they refuse mm. to talk about it. That's why we say the first principle in any successful marriage is open communication. Don't be afraid to talk about your money habits. Don't be afraid, even your spiritual beliefs. Mm. Yes. Then when you are dating, when you are in country, people are trying to pretend, you know, but when you have decided that you are going to get married, then you just need to open up. If you believe that, oh, this is where I want to watch it, I'll be Catholic forever, nothing will stop me. And he says, no, I was born and brought up a Catholic, but now I want to be a Pentecostal. That's also an issue. But if the couples have sat down, discussed this before they would get to the marriage, then we will see some bit of a peace in marriages. Yes, any question?
Okay. Uh, well, I mean, you, you touched on a very sensitive mm. issue, which is, you know, um, planning, you know, financially for extended family yes. members within, you know, the marriage. Because um, there's a nuclear family that you've just started or couples have started and yes. they need to also nurture financially. Yet there are still those responsibilities for, you know, extended family members, especially in-laws, parents and what have you, which, which I think is quite impressive. Um, in instances where, you know, you can't rule out the emergencies, the... the sudden um, need to spend um, mm. maybe one health crisis you know just came up and you need to definitely you know address of it course. as quickly as possible when such instances you know arise uh, yeah. how, how can couples address them you know one of the checklists is savings too mm. how the savings account in doing that you also have to have an emergency account like i explained yesterday even when you combine it's also good for each person to also have their own separate where they can do their own personal runs as the case may be so you don't want to start disturbing your partner using the joint uh, account. account to do your very personal basic things for you you have an emergency account now of course if emergency happens you go to the emergency account and you use from it however nobody plans 100 percent for any emergency mm -hmm. if there is a medical condition or if something just happened, okay, then there's nothing you can do about it. There's nothing wrong to even seek help. Yes, there's nothing wrong to seek help because this is not something you plan for. However, in finance, just like insurance, you don't wait mm. for the rainy day. Yes. You don't wait the day it happens. You just believe that it will happen one day. Okay. And eventually, it might not even happen. happen okay. You know? So, and that's why I always advise couples that no matter all what you have planned, then whatever you believe in, that factor, what it is, God, Allah, the case may be, is also very important in any successful marriage. Right. Well, I just wanted to talk about it. Probably you may add it to our next topic or talk about it briefly, the issue of prenuptial agreements. Yes, I cleverly do want to mention mm. it, but uh, since you have said it, but it, it, it's important <laughs> so people know. Some persons will want to sign, some people don't want to sign, and some persons will have a spouse that would, doesn't mind signing, and the other one that doesn't want to talk about it. So it's important we talk about this thing. Yes, we will talk about it. Like, yeah, yeah. Okay. On Friday we will talk about it. Yeah, I was very careful. I don't want to because in this part of um, the world, the world, yeah, we don't want to, hmm. you know. And if you look at the, our law, marriage laws, do you know that? The, the wedding you do in the church mm -hmm. is not our tradition. Yeah. It's the tradition of the English people. That is their own traditional wedding. But for here, we see it as if it is white wedding. That's it. It's not our tradition. The uh, customary marriage, court marriage, that's what we recognize here. And that's why most churches are not telling you that they are already registered mm -hmm. so that they give you that certificate. But what you are doing in church there is just the English tradition. And when people say that vow that they take there, that is from the Bible, it was written by one Anglican bishop sometime in the 15th century. Yes, that's the truth. But because they have colonized us, look at me and Samson now, we are wearing suits now. <laughs> so that's what we are following. So we are going to look at them. Um, that uh, pre notes yeah. and post notes. All right. Yes. Well, thank you so much for <laughs> at least. Yeah. Well, I think that's a good place to wrap. It's it's a good place to wrap it up, and I'm sure um you know married couples and even intend um, intending ones as well will be interested in that um series that will begin on Friday talking about yes. prenuptial agreements. Exactly. Thank and you. let's see how that pans out. Well, that was um, the personal finance segment with Charles Fracker bringing to an end the series we began last week about um having financial bliss in marriage. We'll go on a break now. One return. It will be time for sports updates, even as we hit home stretch on the show. Please, to stay with us.